Good morning, everyone. And welcome, as I'd like to say, to the magic that is this network. I would like to thank Marion and her committee. You all have done a fantastic job starting us off both yesterday and this morning, and with Global Ties getting us through Snowzilla. I'm really pleased to see everybody here. I'd also like to thank Jennifer and the Global Ties team for the strategic dialogue yesterday. I hope many of you made it. It was stupendous, illuminating sessions, just a terrific job. So thank you very much for kicking us off with the dialogue. As we've seen, the conversations that occur during this national meeting are extraordinarily valuable. The panels and the working groups and the receptions will be important opportunities for us to exchange information and to sustain amazingly positive and productive relationships. Again, my compliments to all of the teams who have put together this year's national meeting and to all of you who will lead sessions as well. Now, I earlier referred to the magic that is the network. Let me explain. I've been with the Foreign Service for nearly 20 years. One constant I've witnessed throughout my career is the power of individuals to connect across borders and to collaborate on issues of real importance. You could say it's why I joined the Foreign Service. Now, as a Foreign Service officer, the IVLP program has a very special place in my heart, but also in the hearts and the strategies of my colleagues around the globe. I've served in U.S. embassies around the world, nominating and working alongside the IVLP participants whom you have introduced to our country. We consider it the gold standard of all of our exchanges. Yet, for me and my colleagues abroad, we have little sense of the extent of this great network that you all have created. We nominate rising leaders in their countries to the IVLP program. We send them to the Office of International Visitors. They come back as heads of state, or the equivalent in their field of expertise. Yes, magic. That would be you, all of you. Thank you so much. Now, over the last several months, I've had the chance to learn about and better understand both the magic and the hard work that make all of this happen. I attended our last Diplomacy Begins Here Summit in Manchester in 2015, my second day on the job. I've spent time with the DC portion of the network in our projects. I joined our special entrepreneurship initiative in Chicago. And I've traveled to New York into our office there to see our engagement with the UN. I'm thrilled to be here this week with you to learn more and to share our visions for the future. And as some of you may know, the State Department is transitioning the current director position from a political appointee to a senior foreign service position. And it appears you're stuck with me. Thank you. Thank you. Now, to give you a bit of an insider's perspective into how I think about the IVLP and our network, please allow me to tell you a little bit about my life before government. Prior to joining the Foreign Service, I was in manufacturing in the private sector. I could have told you more about steel than I ever thought possible. But that engineering and management background has served me very well. I then did a bit of a 180, and I turned my attention wholly to the public service sphere. Working with an international NGO, and much to my father's chagrin, reducing my salary tremendously. I was a public relations specialist, and my work took me, excuse me, took me across the United States. I only have two states now left to visit. I moved every month to a different city around North America, taking care of advanced logistics and publicity, somewhat similar to the work that our network does. Even before that, I was interested in international understanding. In college, I studied overseas. And I also spent another year living with 70 host families in the US and seven different countries, which meant that 70 families and 70 communities hosted us that year. It's also why I can't thank all of you enough for everything that you do and why I'm excited by the opportunity to get to know all of you and work together in the future. Last year, we marked our 75th anniversary. I Am Diplomacy kicks off the next five, 10, 75 years. So what does the future look like? And what does it mean in terms of how we move people to move policy? 
First, as fellow diplomats, all of us in the room, what are our policy priorities for 2016? Now, we're being asked, as is every other part of the public diplomacy family, to continue to make meaningful contributions to mitigating and resolving crises. This means more projects on preventing and countering violent extremism, or CVE, and also on refugee issues. For example, some of you are already working on the first IVLP iteration of the SCN, the Strong Cities Network. This initiative, developed out of UNGA, the UN General Assembly last year, seeks to bring together municipal officials and civic representatives from across the globe to develop shared resources and strategies to address violent extremism. And of course, we'll continue to host numerous security-centered programs, including our annual Towards a More Safe and Secure World Special Initiative and Conference. Now, in regard to our policy imperative to advance inclusive economic growth, our focus will remain on entrepreneurship, and in particular, on our multiple regional series for women entrepreneurs. Many of our projects already contain elements which directly or indirectly promote economic growth. In fact, over one-third of our total projects last year. And so we'll continue to review and to refine those elements. Now, also included among the State Department's strategic po policy priorities are promoting open and resilient democratic societies and mitigating and adapting to climate change. We'll provide emphasis on the value of diversity and the importance of human rights. LGBT and disability rights, minority and women's rights. Our ECA leadership has also integrated this policy goal more directly with our security goals. For example, encouraging us to further develop our initiatives around women's role in peace and security. Now, while I've only specifically noted a few of our projects, all of our 700 some IVLP projects every year fall under one of these policy priorities. And our success demands that they rest on a foundation of mutual understanding between peoples and across cultures. Our DAS, Mara Tekic, will speak in more detail about these policy priorities and about the network's contributions. Now, my colleagues will likely tell you that I often note that while the what of what we do is important, equally, if not more important, is how we do what we do. So the question becomes how are we employing the potential and the power of our exchanges to create these policy outcomes? First, we're looking at how we can improve the flow of both programs and funding to the network throughout the year. I know this is an ongoing challenge and we're going to work on it seriously. I do know that DC is usually not the city or experience which has the greatest impact on our visitors. It's when they get out in the field to you and we want to provide the support that you all need. And believe it or not, I was not surprised to hear that a flat budget is good news. It is very good news in the current federal budget climate. In fact, Congress refused to accept a decrease in IVLP funding this year. Very good news. Now that said, we would be more than happy to have increased funding for our IVLP programs and for you, the network. Now we're also looking at streamlining our operations. While OIV, our Office of International Visitors, is a very well-oiled machine, we'd like to reduce potential duplication of our partners' efforts in both designing and implementing our projects. There are a number of ways in which we hope to strengthen the network and our programs, and we'd love to have your input in order to do so. Now, I'm pleased to see our Diplomacy Begins Here Summit will be ongoing for 2016 in Tulsa, in Albany, in San Francisco, and in Minneapolis. These will, and congratulations to all those who have received the summits. These summits will further deepen our professional development and our thematic expertise, and it will help all of us to build new partnerships. And speaking of building new partnerships, we'd like to welcome a new CBM to the Global Ties Network, Presidential Precinct, who I believe are attending their first national meeting. Presidential Precinct, are you here today? Welcome, Presidential Precinct. Now, programmatically, we're going to be seeing more frequent requests for what we call rapid response programs, and we're all going to need greater agility across everything that we do. 
as specific foreign policy issues play an ever-increasing role in driving our work, we're going to see more projects, less lead time for development, and a more narrow focus. Now, participant-wise, where are we headed? We're going to be seeing more of the under 30 demographic as the globe continues to grow younger and as our posts overseas identify even younger rising stars. When I was overseas, we were looking at the early 20s and trying to identify participants at that age. So I'd like to throw out a question for us to think about over the coming year. What do we need to be doing the same or differently for this generation, which brings many paradigm shifts in lifestyle, in communications, in priorities? And do we need to be thinking about incorporating similar generation domestic US interlocutor counterparts in our programs as well? Now you've established the Emerging Leaders Program for our profession. Congratulations, sincere congratulations on this great initiative. And I we're very pleased to have all of you here at today's national meeting as well. My question is though, do we now need a network of US contemporaries for our young IVs? It's something to think about. And how do we best communicate with this demographic as well as with our internet linked world? We'll be looking at designing more public messaging that you can use with your communities in addition to the project specific social media that we already do. And we'll also be looking at how to incorporate virtual elements into more of our projects. Now finally, how will we know we got there? And how do we measure the impact? We're going to continue to examine our metrics. As it would appear, we might be over-evaluating without consistency across our CBMs, our NPAs, and in our office, OIV. I very much hope we're able to streamline that process with performance indicators that help us to not only measure our impact, but to better and more effectively design our future projects and our initiatives. As we often say, it's not about what we do, it's about what our IVs do in the future. And we know they do more than become heads of state, even if that's a superlative start. Now finally, at all of my posts overseas, I've seen the incredible impact of our exchange programs, especially the IVLP, on international visitors after they return home. They can't say enough about it, and it's all great. They say they've seen the real America, and that's because they've met you, and they've met your communities. Now, as Secretary Kerry told us at the end of the year, and I'm quoting here, because of the breadth of our interests, the ideals we stand for, and the accelerating pace of change, the United States today is more deeply engaged in more places, with more partners, on more important issues than ever before in our history. Now, much of what we do here at the State Department every single day, and what the network does across the country, may never make a headline, even as it makes our country and our world more prosperous and more secure. I agree with Secretary Kerry that our shared resolve is to make 2016 a year to remember for all the right reasons. I'd like to thank you very much, and thank you very much for the very warm welcome to this network.